Welcome to Birmingham. Notwithstanding, they would not hear, but hardened their necks, like to the neck of their fathers that did not believe in the Lord their God. And they rejected his statutes and his covenant that he made with their fathers, and his testimonies which he testified against them. And they followed vanity, and became vain, and went after the heathen that were round about them, concerning whom the Lord had charged them that they should not do like them. And they left all the commandments of the Lord their God, and made them molten images, even two calves, and made a grove, and worshipped all the host of heaven, and served Baal. And they caused their sons and their daughters to pass through the fire, and used divination and enchantments, and sold themselves to do evil in the sight of the Lord, to provoke him to anger. And Elijah said unto the prophets of Baal, Choose you one bullock for yourselves, and dress it first, for ye are many, and call on the name of your gods, but put no fire under. And they took the bullock which was given them, and they dressed it, and called on the name of Baal from morning even until noon, saying, O Baal, hear us! But there was no voice, nor any that answered, and they leaped upon the altar which was made. And it came to pass at noon that Elijah mocked them and said, Cry aloud, for he is a god. Either he is talking, or he is pursuing, or he is in a journey, or for adventure he sleepeth and must be awaked. And they cried aloud and cut themselves after their manner with knives and lancets till the blood gushed out upon them. And they...
If the queen was the king's mother, and Jesus is now the king, it is fitting that Mary is the queen mother. And if Jesus is the king of heaven, that makes Mary the queen of heaven. So, queen of heaven, or in Latin, Regina Caeli, is one of the many titles used for Mary in sacred tradition. You know, as Catholics, we often get criticized for that prayer, Hail Holy Queen. This is blasphemy. No, as you can see, it makes sense. This does not mean that we worship Mary. Catholics don't worship Mary and we never have and never will. You know, as Bishop Fulton Sheen used to say, millions of people hate what they think is the Catholic Church, but very few, if any, hate what is actually the Catholic Church. And Mary's an example. We honor her as queen and we call her blessed because in Luke, 1st Luke verse 48, Mary says all generations will call her blessed. Pius XII in his 1954 encyclical, The Queen, uh, To the Queen of Heaven, says Mary deserves the title because she is mother of God and because of her intercessory power, as we saw, for instance, at the wedding feast at Cana. You know, John Damascene said, when she became mother of the Creator, she became queen of every creature. And after these things I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power, and the earth was lightened with his glory. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, and is become the habitation of devils, and the hold of every foul spirit, and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication, and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her, and the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. For her sins have reached unto heaven, and God hath remembered her iniquities. Reward her even as she rewarded you, and double unto her double according to her works, in the cup which she hath filled, filled to her double. How much she hath glorified herself, and lived deliciously. So much torment and sorrow give her, for she saith in her heart, I sit a queen, and am no widow, and shall see no sorrow. Therefore shall her plagues come in one day, death and mourning and famine, and she shall be utterly burned with fire, for strong is the Lord God who judgeth her. And the kings of the earth who have committed fornication and live deliciously with her shall bewail her and lament for her when they shall see the smoke of her burning, standing afar off for the fear of her torment, saying, Alas, alas, that great city Babylon, that mighty city, for in one hour is thy judgment come. E quindi e poi è la, la corsa della Madonna, immagine per tutti, ecco la corsa che parte in questo momento. Tutto, tutto è bene quello che finisce bene, una corsa anche quest'anno brillante, entusiasmante, che non ha tradito le attese. Vediamo l'abbraccio liberatorio dei confratelli lauretani che stringono la guida, 
tutta la quadriglia, un momento bellissimo qui in piazza Garibaldi, il rituale dello sparo dei mortaretti, il volo delle colombe, la caduta del manto nero, del dolore che ha lasciato il posto al verde della speranza, è riuscito perfettamente, quindi complimenti alla quadriglia che quest'anno ha eseguito la corsa, una corsa che rivediamo in questo momento e la rivedremo ovviamente anche eh, nel corso di questa diretta, qualcuno l'avrà già immortalata sul web, quindi la rivedremo nei prossimi giorni, ecco l'immagine che poi resta della Pasqua sul Monese, bellissima, bellissima questa corsa della Madonna, si sente l'alleluia di Endel, si sente questo eco di gioia, vedete qui ancora il volo delle colombe, la caduta del manto, lo sparo dei montaretti, dritta è andata la Madonna verso la resurrezione e dice fatelo anche voi, e lo faccia ciascuno che sta seguendo questa diretta, verso il Cristo e il fine della vita. Ora vedremo se possiamo raccogliere qualche umore a caldo da coloro che hanno seguito la corsa, che riproponiamo ancora in questo il momento una frazione di secondo, più o meno 14 secondi, forse anche meno, che però sono indimenticabili, restano scolpiti davvero nel cuore, nella memoria di tutti, quindi ovviamente l'applauso, liberatorio anche della folla, perché tutti abbiamo trattenuto il fiato in attesa. The word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, Stand in the gate of the Lord's house, and proclaim there this word, and say, Hear the word of the Lord, all ye of Judah, that enter in at these gates to worship the Lord. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Amend your ways and your doings, and I will cause you to dwell in this place. Trust ye not in lying words, saying, The temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord are these. For if ye thoroughly amend your ways and your doings, if ye thoroughly execute judgment between a man and his neighbor, if ye oppress not the stranger, the fatherless, and the widow, and shed not innocent blood in this place, neither walk after other gods to your hurt, then will I cause you to dwell in this place, in the land that I gave to your fathers for ever and ever. Behold, ye trust in lying words that cannot profit. Will ye steal, murder, and commit adultery, and swear falsely, and burn incense unto Baal, and walk after other gods whom ye know not? And come and stand before me in this house which is called by my name, and say, We are delivered to do all these abominations? Is this house which is called by my name, become a den of robbers in your eyes? Behold, even I have seen it, saith the Lord. But go ye now unto my place which was in Shiloh, where I set my name at the first, and see what I did to it for the wickedness of my people Israel. And now, because you have done all these works, saith the Lord, and I spake unto you, rising up early and speaking, but ye heard not, and I called you, but ye answered not. Therefore will I do unto this house which is called by my name, wherein ye trust, and unto the place which I gave to you and to your fathers, as I have done to Shiloh. And I will cast you out of my sight, as I have cast out all your brethren, even the whole seed of Ephraim. Therefore pray not thou for this people, neither lift up cry nor prayer for them, neither make intercession to me, for I will not hear thee. Seest thou not what they do in the cities of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem? The children gather wood, and the fathers kindle the fire, and the women knead their dough to make cakes to the queen of heaven, and to pour out drink offerings unto other gods, that they may provoke me to anger. Do they provoke me to anger, saith the Lord? Do they not provoke themselves to the confusion of their own faces? Therefore thus saith the Lord God, Behold! Mine anger and my fury shall be poured out upon this place, upon man, and upon beast, and upon the trees of the field, and upon the fruit of the ground, and it shall burn, and shall not be quenched. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, 
the God of Israel. Put your burnt offerings unto your sacrifices, and eat flesh. For I spake not unto your fathers, nor commanded them in the day that I brought them out of the land of Egypt, concerning burnt offerings or sacrifices. But this thing commanded I them, saying, Obey my voice, and I will be your God, and ye shall be my people, and walk ye in all the ways that I have commanded you, that it may be well unto you. But they hearkened not, nor inclined their ear, but walked in the counsels, and in the imagination of their evil heart, and went backward and not forward. Since the day that your fathers came forth out of the land of Egypt unto this day, I have even sent unto you all my servants the prophets, daily rising up early, and sending them. Yet they hearken not unto me, nor incline their ear, but harden their neck. They did worse than their fathers. Therefore thou shalt speak all these words unto them. But they will not hearken to thee. Thou shalt also call unto them, but they will not answer thee. But thou shalt say unto them, This is a nation that obeyeth not the voice of the Lord their God, nor receiveth correction. Truth is perished, and is cut off from their mouth. Una maestra de vida espiritual, a puentón, una santiña a quien se recorre para obtener favores. The Pope sat before the image of the Virgin and recited the prayer that is most notably known in Fatima, the Rosary. She's called the United Nations International Pilgrim Statue of Fatima and travels around the world. I've seen people who break down in tears as soon as they look at the face. The faithful believe they're seeing the face of Jesus' beloved mother Mary. The theologian say it's called the aura of the mother of God around it. That means the mother of God's presence is with that image in such a way that you can look at other images of Our Lady and get your fill. It is one of the, say, the four original statues made under the guidance of Sister Lucia, the oldest of the three children. The three children, Lucia, Jacinta, and Francisco, said they saw an apparition of Mary while herding sheep near the village of Fatima, Portugal, May 13, 1917, and she revealed three secrets to them, including the prediction of World Wars I and II. And this is the face Lucia described. When you're looking at it, you feel her presence. You can get your fill at looking at other beautiful images, but you cannot get your fill at looking at this just want to look, look, and look again. Just a Mary shrine here, Mary shrine there, Mary shrine here, everywhere. Why do people praise and worship Mary, whom Jesus was born of? A famous Catholic bishop and writer, Alphonsus Liguori, explained in his writings that it is far effective to pray to Mary than to Christ. While he yet talked to the people, behold, his mother and his brethren stood without, desiring to speak with him. Then one said unto him, Behold, thy mother and thy brethren stand without, desiring to speak with thee. But he answered and said unto him that told him, Who is my mother, and who are my brethren? And he stretched forth his hand toward his disciples and said, Behold, my mother and my brethren. For whosoever shall do the will of my Father which is in heaven, the same is my brother and sister and mother.
Nebuchadnezzar, the king, made an image of gold, whose height was three score cubits, and the breadth thereof six cubits. He set it up in the plain of Dura, in the province of Babylon. Then Nebuchadnezzar the king sent to gather together the princes, the governors, and the captains, the judges, the treasurers, the counselors, the sheriffs, and all the rulers of the provinces, to come to the dedication of the image which Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. Then the princes, the governors, and captains, the judges, the treasurers, the counselors, the sheriffs, and all the rulers of the provinces, were gathered together unto the dedication of the image that Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. And they stood before the image that Nebuchadnezzar had set up. Then an herald cried aloud, To you it is commanded, O people, nations, and languages, that at what time ye hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackbut, psaltery, dulcimer, and all kinds of music, ye fall down and worship the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar the king hath set up. And whoso falleth not down and worshipeth, shall the same hour be cast into the midst of a burning, fiery furnace. Therefore at that time, when all the people heard the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackbut, psaltery, and all kinds of music, all the people, the nations, and the languages, fell down and worshipped the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. Wherefore at that time certain Chaldeans came near and accused the Jews, They spake and said to the king Nebuchadnezzar, O king, live for ever. Thou, O king, hast made a decree that every man that shall hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackbut, psaltery, and dulcimer, and all kinds of music, shall fall down and worship the golden image. And whoso falleth not down and worshipeth, that he should be cast into the midst of a burning fiery furnace. Thou certain Jews, whom thou hast set over the affairs of the province of Babylon, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, these men, O king, have not regarded thee. They serve not thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar, in his rage and fury, commanded to bring Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Then they brought these men before the king. Nebuchadnezzar spake and said unto them, Is it true, O Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? Do not ye serve my gods, nor worship the golden image which I have set up? Now, if ye be ready that at what time ye hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackbut, psaltery, and dulcimer, and all kinds of music, ye fall down and worship the image which I have made well. But if ye worship not, ye shall be cast the same hour into the midst of a burning fiery furnace. And who is that God that shall deliver you out of my hands? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee in this matter. If it be so, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace, and he will deliver us out of thine hand, O king. But if not, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. Then was Nebuchadnezzar full of fury and the form of his visage was changed against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Therefore he spake, and commanded that they should heat the furnace one seven times more than it was wont to be heated. And he commanded the most mighty men that were in his army to bind a Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and to cast them into the burning fiery furnace. Then these men were bound in their coats, their hosen, and their hats, and their other garments, and were cast into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. Therefore, because the king's commandment was urgent, and the furnace exceeding hot, the flame of the fire slew those men that took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down bound into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. Then Nebuchadnezzar the king was astonished, and rose up in haste, and spake, and said unto his counselors, Did not we cast three men bound into the midst of the fire? They answered and said unto the king, True, O king. He answered and said, Lo, I see four men loose, walking in the midst of the fire, and they have no hurt, and the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. 
Then Nebuchadnezzar came near to the mouth of the burning fiery furnace, and spake and said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, ye servants of the Most High God, come forth and come hither. Then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came forth of the midst of the fire. And the princes, governors, and captains, and the king's counselors, being gathered together, saw these men, upon whose bodies the fire had no power, nor was an hair of their head singed, neither were their coats changed, nor the smell of fire had passed on them. Then Nebuchadnezzar spake and said, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who hath sent his angel, and delivered his servants that trusted in him, and have changed the king's word, and yielded their bodies, that they might not serve nor worship any god except their own god. Therefore I make a decree that every people, nation, and language which speak anything amiss against the god of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego shall be cut in pieces, and their houses shall be made a dunghill, because there is no other god that can deliver after this sort. Then the king promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the province of Babylon. New York City has just erected a golden demon statue on top of a courthouse near Madison Square Park. And when I say a golden demon statue, I'm not being hyperbolic or funny. It is a gold statue of a demon woman with horns on her head and weird tentacle things for arms dedicated to Ruth Bader Ginsburg and specifically to Ginsburg's support for abortion. The artist who made it told the New York Times that the statue is part of a, quote, urgent and necessary cultural reckoning underway as New York reconsiders traditional representations of power in public spaces and recasts civic structures to better reflect 21st century mores. The libs and the artists see this as a wonderful thing. The horns on the beast are, according to the reports, meant to symbolize autonomy and sovereignty. Nice enough sounding values, and at least until you think about what they really mean. But
now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, and by our gathering together unto him, that ye be not soon shaken in mind, or be troubled neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things? And now ye know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work, only he who now letteth will let, until he be taken out of the way. And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming, even him, whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders, and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they received not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. And for this cause God shall send them strong delusion, that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned who believed not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. For we are bound to give thanks always to God for you, brethren, beloved of the Lord, because God hath from the beginning chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the Spirit and belief of the truth. Whereunto he called you by our gospel to the obtaining of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, brethren, stand fast, and hold the traditions which ye have been taught, whether by word or our epistle. Now, our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God, even our Father, which hath loved us, and hath given us everlasting consolation and good hope through grace, comfort your hearts, and establish you in every good word and work. Religious leaders are gathering November 6th through the 18th for a ceremony they're calling Returning to Sinai, where they say that they're going to issue a new Ten Commandments to repent for man-made climate change. The website Interface Center for Sustainable Development has an article discussing the upcoming event titled In Sinai, A Prophetic Call for Climate Justice and Ceremony of Repentance. Mount Sinai is, of course, where Moses received the Ten Commandments, but these religious leaders are actually calling for a new universal Ten Commandments. Todos somos hijos de Dios. Creo en el amor. Creo en el amor. Creo en el amor. Creo en el amor. Que el diálogo sincero entre hombres y mujeres de diversas religiones conlleve frutos de paz y justicia. The final stage is being set in November 2022 and it will ultimately lead to the one world religion. This year the Holy Father's message implores the world, listen to the voice of creation and hear its bittersweet song, sweetly praising the Creator, bitterly lamenting our mistreatment of nature. Very worried about this mis mistreatment, the Holy Father calls for bolder action from all nations during this year's COP27 and COP15 summits on climate change and biodiversity. Regarding COP27, Pope Francis again joins scientists in holding to the Paris Agreement's temperature increase goal of 1.5 degrees. The planet already is 1.2 degrees hotter. During this season of creation, may all Christians come together to celebrate the creation's sweet song and respond to creation's bitter cry. Are you been on Mount Sinai is absolutely insane. Confío en Buda. Creo en Dios. Creo en Jesucristo. Creo en Dios. Allah. Muchos piensan distinto, sienten distinto. Buscan a Dios o encuentran a Dios de diversa manera. En esta multitud, en este abanico de religiones, hay una sola certeza que tenemos para todos. Religious leaders are gathering November 6th through the 18th for a ceremony they're calling Returning to Sinai, where they say that they're going to issue a new Ten Commandments to repent for man-made climate change. The website Interface Center for Sustainable Development has an article discussing the upcoming event titled In Sinai, A Prophetic Call for Climate Justice and Ceremony of Repentance. Mount Sinai is, of course, where Moses received the Ten Commandments, but these religious leaders are actually calling for a new universal Ten Commandments. Todos somos hijos de Dios. Creo en el amor. Creo en el amor. 
Creo en el amor. Creo en el amor. Que el diálogo sincero entre hombres y mujeres de diversas religiones conlleve frutos de paz y justicia. The final stage is being set in November 2022 and it will ultimately lead to the one world religion. This year the Holy Father's message implores the world. Listen to the voice of creation and hear its bittersweet song, sweetly praising the Creator, bitterly lamenting our mistreatment of nature. Very worried about this mis mistreatment, the Holy Father calls for bolder action from all nations during this year's COP27 and COP15 summits on climate change and biodiversity. Regarding COP27, Pope Francis again joins scientists in holding to the Paris Agreement's temperature increase goal of 1.5 degrees. The planet already is 1.2 degrees hotter. During this season of creation, may all Christians come together to celebrate the creation's sweet song and respond to creation's bitter cry. The 7th Congress of Leaders of Wild and Traditional Religions started in Kazakhstan's capital, Nur Sultan. Pope Francis is among the guests, as well as high representatives of various religions. One of the goals of this Congress is to promote peace through dialogue. It's absolutely necessary to have a dialogue on the challenges of this world and to have a strong collective call for peace and justice in this world as well. The key for peace today in this unstable world is to engage, to talk, to be together, to try to understand each other and to know personally each other. And that's what can bring people together. This year's Congress brings together delegates from more than 50 countries representing different world religions. To compare with the first Congress, uh, there were only 17 delegations. Now we have more than 100 delegations. So it uh, shows uh, that uh, there is an interest in the world and there is a support of the spiritual leaders. The most important thing that is being achieved here is to normalize the conversation between different religions through their religious leaders. It is to make it popular and important for religious leaders to come together as one, which is very rare and we don't see it very frequently, but it essentially normalizes the space of convening between different religions. And in our times and in our world, that's very important. Many global challenges were raised at this Congress and the pandemic was one of them. Some of the participants said that the pandemic has clearly shown how connected human beings are, stressing that this is something many seemed to forget. Galina which early Christianity came right out of paganism in Rome, they were already worshiping the sun god on Sunday in Rome, which is where we get worshiping on Sunday from. All judges, city people, and craftsmen shall rest on the venerable day of the sun. Constantine's edict in 321 played an important role in making the sun god worship faith to put its roots down in the church. Many Bible believers today have followed tradition handed down by previous generations. They believe and were taught that Sunday is the proper day of worship. That the Savior changed the day of worship from the Jewish Sabbath to Sunday. The adoption of Sunday as the Christian Sabbath has little to do with the Bible and everything to do with Constantine the Great over 300 years after the Messiah's death. Constantine was emperor of the Roman Empire from 306 to 337 CE. He was a sun worshiper who on his deathbed converted to Christianity. In 321 CE, while still a sun worshiper, Constantine established Sunday as the day of worship. He decreed, On the venerable day of the sun, let the magistrates and people residing in cities rest, and let all workshops be closed. In this coin circulated by Constantine in 317 CE, we see the face of Constantine on one side, 
and on the other the figure of Sol Invictus, the unconquered sun. The sun god was also known as Mithras, and his birth was on December 25th. This date was adopted as the birth of Christ and became the date for Christmas many centuries later. Clearly Constantine was an avid worshipper of the sun god Sol Invictus. Amazingly, Martin Luther, the champion of the modern-day Protestant movement, said, They allege that the Sabbath changed into Sunday, the Lord's Day, contrary to the Decalogue as it appears. Neither is there any example more boasted of than the changing of the Sabbath day. Great, say they, is the power and authority of the Church, since it dispensed with one of the Ten Commandments. Revelation 17 and there came one of the seven angels which had the seven vials, and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither. I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters, with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet-colored beast, full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns, and the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color, and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery, Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth.